hello guys uh, welcome to another video so today we're going to look at nasdaq so you know how i do things here i'm just gonna take you through you know from the highest time frame until the smaller time frame where we'll be you know looking for trading opportunities so make sure that you stay with me until the end so that i can just show you how i do my top-down approach or the breakdown of the markets and come up with my final decisions whether i'll be uh, looking for buy opportunities or sell opportunities so let's get started all right so this is the chart on nasdaq but remember we're on month i mean daily here but i cannot just start on a daily and just start making decisions from there because i won't know you know where this could be going for long term so it's very important that you start with the highest time frames then you work your way down so that you can have an idea of where this could be headed for long term before you come to making short term decisions on the smaller time frames. So we are going to start analyzing from monthly. So this is how the chart looks like on monthly. So what have we got here? So what we need to just take from this because this is the very big time frame. We won't be trading directly from it. We just have to have we just want to have like a picture of what is happening on the bigger scale. So what we can take from this is that I don't think the price moved higher than this. So what we need to take is that the price currently is inside a resistance or an area of supply, which is basically the drop base drop. So remember the drop base drop, I explained it nicely in the video that I made yesterday on Euro USD. So if you haven't watched that one, make sure that you check it out. So basically a drop base drop is when the price is moving uh, on its way to the downside and we do know that the price doesn't make always make like a smooth move like this even though it's going to the downside but it will always maybe have pullbacks in between sometimes it will just stop and then continue so when it stops and continues like in this case this is where you're saying it dropped and then it stopped that's the base and then it dropped again so that's the drop base drop so that's the resistance or the the area of supply that i'm talking about in this case saying that currently the price is inside that drop base drop which means there will always be a force uh, forcing it to go to the downside for as long as the price doesn't remove the drop base drop completely so the sellers they will always try and defend that zone because remember the buyers they're there trying to take out uh, the, the 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 sellers completely but the sellers are saying no we will try and defend this structure and try and push the price down so as being inside that it means there's always a chance of reaction from there basically so let's move down to a weekly chart when we get down to the weekly chart we can see we are having the same thing currently the price is inside this area of resistance or the supply which is also inside that bigger one that we saw on on uh, on monthly so meaning there's always a chance that the price will move to the downside even though it's nicely in an uptrend having a bullish trend line there and having the nearest areas of support somewhere down there so i'm not saying that the price has to drop towards the trend line and the support before it can take off or even remove them and continue going to the downside i'm just saying that the fact that we are inside a higher time frame structure especially on monthly there's always a possibility that we can have a pullback and when you're talking about a pullback a pullback can be a deeper one a pullback can be just or a pullback can be and then we continue because remember when you're talking about it going to the downside we did have a like when you're mentioning the drop base drop that's where we have something like this so when you're going to the upside there's always a chance that you can you know rest a uh, pull back before continuing or you can just rest there and continue so that's what we're suspecting that is going to happen here we can uh, just have a pause and continue or oh, but the fact that we're inside that bigger one there's a chance that we can have a pullback before continuing the pullback doesn't have to be deep but there's a chance that we might have a pullback from where we are now this is what we have on daily daily is still very uh, much bullish push into the upside i'm just not sure if uh, we moved higher than uh, uh the previous high here but if you look at it up there this high when you compare it with this high i don't think it moved higher than it so we can see that the bulls have been trying pushing to the upside they have their nice 
a bullish trend line there that hasn't been removed and the price then moved to the trend line let me just try and mark it nicely so that you can see where i'm connecting it i'm connecting it from here connecting it with this one then it moves like that somewhere around there so this one we're not gonna try and involve it so much which is what the guys that are that's how we do it me and the guys that i've been teaching and i made sure that it makes that sense to them why we don't want to involve it as yet uh, so that's what i teach go more into details when i'm you know in the mentorship uh, giving the classes but basically we don't want to add it as yet because we didn't have that high there we're saying that this high did not break that one so that's why we don't want to come here as yet so we still keep our trend line there and now the price when it was trying to make a new high we can see the type of candlesticks it was making up there which is just pin bars where you can see that even though it was pushing nicely to the upside all of that was just you know becoming weak and weak and all of a sudden the sellers are saying no we don't want to let you print a new high because remember if uh, you as a seller you want to fight the bulls the only way you can take power from them is if you don't allow them to continue printing higher highs because the moment they print a higher high they're going up the moment they break that previous high and move up they're going up but if you're going to keep them here and say, no, I don't want you higher than that, it means you're fighting them. Then you're forcing them to maybe go back and even change the trend. Because if we if they break this and keep making higher highs, they will keep on being in a upward trend. So for now, we can see that there's a sort of a pause here. Currently, this we can take it as an, uh, our area of... of uh, you know potential area of demand or support so price can struggle to pass from there we are saying it's potential because these guys or the the very same zone when it pushed up it did not break that which is what i'm telling you about now so when we are in the mentorship i give you know full details as to like how do you go about selecting which one is potential and which one is confirmed so basically this is a potential one if you want to take a buy trade there if you are someone that's trading on daily you will have to get confirmation there because of what the bulls are not the strongest because you can see they failed to remove that high so why do you think they're the strongest they are not if they were the strongest they will remove that pullback then you can say these guys pushed up and broke that high but in this case that didn't happen so but it's a potential one they can still try and gather some strength and then push up and then break that high on the second attempt so let's see what we have on h4 so this is what we have on h4 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 what have we got h4 was going up h4 became bearish h4 became bullish again so now we were bullish and we could put our trend line somewhere here and say that's our bullish trend line and the trend line has been removed so as the the nearest area of demand or the support so both of them have been removed you can see that on h4 the bears we became so aggressive which was that time when the on on daily we had those pin bars there at the top and we were failing to remove that high on daily right so now we can see that clearly here the momentum has shifted to the downside and this is the target so the bears are trying to push to at least this because they defeated the first one the second goal is to bring it here they might not go all the way down like i said when i was telling you on weekly or daily i did say that we as much as we're anticipating a pullback but a pullback does not mean that it has to be a deeper one that's the tricky part about anticipating pullbacks because you can anticipate it but you don't know whether it's going to be a deeper pullback or just a minor pullback before continuation when you get to a smaller time frames you just need to make sure that you are only trading until the next opposing structure because otherwise if you're going to look past that it's like now you are saying the pullback has to be a deeper one so here we can say that the best their goal is to come to this area of demand or the support and for you to buy from there you need to be careful because of what currently the trend is not going up so why are you why do you think that on this time frame uh, buying is a is a good thing 
or is the best uh, option you have whereas you know that the trend is not going up so and remember this very same zone that we're talking about here is the one that is inside that daily one where we had said that on daily if you think of taking anything where we are currently you will need confirmation simply because this guy when he pushed up he didn't break that one so if you know on daily you don't have any backup daily is saying no you need to be careful with that and yes so this is the one that you can say that if you were to take sell trades if you already have sell trades from the top you are just gonna exit here because of what this is the next opposing structure the pullback can just can be the end of our pullback or it can be removed and then they continue to drop into the downside so now someone can ask if the price was to move up remember we were there and we took it out and then we paused here you can see there's definitely a white candlestick there which is what i've been telling you about when we're saying drop base drop same thing that we're having here drop we based and then we drop again so that's definitely the nearest area of resistance or the supply we have here and this is the nearest area of demand or the support so if the price and we are saying currently on h4 the price is bearish right because we removed the bullish trend line and we removed the support that was here so currently we are bearish so if we are bearish like this and we want to continue selling do you think you can take a sell from there if the price was to go there yes you can do it but you will also need to get confirmation for that because this is what we had on daily saying that this is a daily support so if this daily support pushes up like that when you're trying to fight it with the h4 resistance you will need to make sure that you are you are smart in terms of how you enter you need to wait for confirmation there as much as we are saying this guy is a potential one but he can still hold and push the price up so when you are trying to take a sell from here should the price move to this because this resistance or this supply is the one that actually broke the the, the support remember we had the support here and we had the trend line there is the one that finished off the support because before the price took off after forming this zone the support was still intact so we can see that he actually achieved something but we still need to make sure that we get confirmation if we were to sell from there same way i said that if you are strong enough and you like taking risks and you're like this being inside that uh, area of support or the the, the you know a potential zone on daily you want to take your chances and push it towards that resistance you will need to take uh, you need to be careful with that you need to have confirmation so what is important when you are trading is for you to be able to identify the most sensitive areas and then from there you will decide whether you can take a trade from them and whether that trade you can take it without any confirmation or you will wait for confirmation so the the first thing that you need to understand is being able to identify sensitive areas highly sensitive areas because now if you can't identify those ones you will be searching for trades even where you don't have any sensitivity so when you are there at a high sensitive area if you already have a trade you know that you need to do something with your trade you need to either close that trade or tighten your stop losses or now when the price is touching the next opposing structure a sensitive area you decide whether if you seeing any signs that the price is being rejected you want to jump in always have a stop loss so that's why it is important for you to be able to identify this sensitive area so that when the price is approaching them you will decide what to do when the price gets there so maybe let's check h1 on h1 we don't really have anything uh, there's no sign as yet that the price wants to turn there's always a chance of it coming towards the lower uh, support or uh, the demand yes i understand you do have some here but those ones they don't have any backup when you look at the ones that is slightly lower at least it will be inside the h41 which is also inside the daily one so there's a chance that it can get there so now what if you are someone that says hey you know uh what do you call this uh nasdaq i can i only trade it on smaller time frames like m15 if you are someone that says that so it means now if you are trading it on m15 and you are getting your direction from h1 this is what you have on h1 and currently h1 is definitely bearish 
So which means you are there saying, can I continue selling or whatnot? When is it the right time for me to buy it? Those are the questions that you'll be asking yourself. Now, do you see anything here that says you can buy? No. In terms of location, are you located well enough within a structure that can cause enough rejection in terms of uh, like i said is are you inside a highly sensitive area like i told you we do have some areas of demand there or areas of support but they don't have any backup from the bigger guys so you can say that currently where you are yes you're inside some uh, areas of of support but you would you wish that you were uh, because if you look at this let me just try and, and highlight this just so that we can see whether you are currently reacting from this one. Right? So, yes, you do have some, you know, zone that you are reacting from. But we do wish that it was the one that is at the swing low. So, this was the one that is going to be inside the daily one and the H41. So, if you are someone that is getting some uh, direction from H1 and you're like, I don't know whether it's the right time for me to buy or what what should i look for for me to maybe start buying then that's when you will say in terms of location yes there's something uh, support in terms of the one that i just showed you and said you are reacting from it currently but that might not be enough because we said this one is not inside anything in terms of the bigger ones so this is what you can do uh, now if this price here if this candlestick the current candlestick was to close right where it is it will give you what you call bullish engulfing and what what is that when you're talking about a bullish engulfing what is it that we're talking about exactly so bullish engulfing is when the price is moving nicely to the downside and then all of a sudden you see a quick reaction and the price goes up with the long candlestick and the body of that candlestick basically swallows or engulfs the bodies of the previous candlesticks which is what we will have here if the current candlestick was to close because the body of this candlestick we have swallowed would swallow the body of this one then that's when you will say you are having bullish engulfing and a bullish engulfing works the same way as a bullish rejection candlesticks they are basically a bullish reversal signs because when you see the bulls engulfing the price of the what the bears were doing or you see the bulls rejecting the price then you can see that they are kicking in that could be a sign that we're getting some reaction because remember you are doubting this guy because of him not having it not having uh, enough backup from the bigger guys but once you see that the price after touching that area it moved up and it engulfed the price action then that's when you can like oh, okay it seems like now there's a chance that we can move up to at least this guy here because remember this guy here this resistance we said he's the one where we, when we were having this bullish trend line and this as our support he's the one that finished off the support and broke it completely so he did something he's quite strong so when you are like to get that you will say that on my h1 if you're trading h1 and m15 on h1 you can see the price there it is getting ready for a pullback or a reversal i was doubting these guys but now i did have a sign of confirmation in a form of what bullish engulfing if that candlestick was to close like that which means there will be a chance that you can go until there that was that is what you would get on your h1 then you will move to your m15 where you'll be searching for trades so this is your m15 and on m15 the current candlestick that daily can i mean h1 candlestick if it was to close because currently on m15 this is the opposing structure i'd be as being at the opposing structure we can still continue going to the downside which means you will have that's why it's important for you to wait for that h1 to close if that's where you are getting your confirmation from or that your direction from because if this was to close somewhere maybe like that it's out or it closes right where it is then you're like okay what do i do now i can see already the price has removed this remember this is the first one not yet you haven't removed it yet if you take out this one right and the h1 closes then you will say okay we are getting some reaction from that zone that i showed you on h1 
and all of this would have been started by this tiny zone here so this is the support or the demand on m15 that started everything and pushed up and broke the resistance that's if it breaks it if not then we don't have reasons to buy it yet if you remove that then you can say already i have a reaction i saw it on h1 i saw when the price was forming uh, that bullish engulfing and here on m15 i see the change in, in the market structure we broke a zone so should the price then push back to it i can look for buying trades there because already i saw that uh, the zone that i was doubting on h1 that's supposed to give me direction is actually uh, now we are seeing that we're getting some reaction that's why we have engulfing on that zone i mean on that time frame and on m15 that's why we have a break of structure or break of resistance or supply so because of that i can now look for buying trades and remember the target will be this so this is your target which is the same zone that we are having on h1 this is the target i explain why on h1 you have to target that one because it's the one that pushed down and finished off uh, breaking that support so that's it so if you have more questions or you are in, you are more interested in taking you know more lessons or the, the the mentorship where i give you all the lessons you are more than welcome to text me but otherwise i'll continue bringing the videos here on 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 youtube and i'll see you guys in the next video if you haven't subscribed guys come on this information is what did so just give us a, uh, a like the video and also subscribe i'll see you in the next video thank you